Hi, it's Claire coming to you from my studio in Irene. We are in the run up to a mini boot camp. We're going to have eight lovely ladies here for three days this week quilting with us. So the studio is chuck a block with extra frames and I'm busy loading fabric. So I thought it was an ideal opportunity to show you how I load my quilts onto the frame. Everybody has a different way, um, but this I'm going to show you my way because it just works so nicely for me. So the first thing that I always do is to check that my backing is nice and straight. So if possible, I put the salvages together. In this piece of fabric, it's actually not that way, but that's how I would normally do it. Put your salvages together um, with your fabric folded. So it's in half this way, folded, two salvages together. And I want to see that the bottom edge hangs nice and straight. I hope you can see it there. If I were to skew the fabric slightly, you get a kink in the bottom. Now if you load that onto your frame, that is going to twist your quilt. So you want to make sure that you have a nice, that your fabric hangs nice and straight at the bottom. Once you've got that right, take the two short ends, put them together, and make a finger crease in the middle for here where the center of your uh, backing fabric is, in the top and the bottom edges. And those we're going to use just now when we load it onto the leader cloth. So I'm here at the back of my gallery frame. I have in infinity on it. It's one of the older ones, so it doesn't have the clear view mode. It is a gallery frame, not a gallery two. Um, the gallery twos I'm going to tell you about just now. But if you have a studio frame or a gallery frame, then this is the method that I would use to load it. Okay, so I start from the back. I just find it so much easier. And I love these super leaders. So you get a wider piece of fabric to your leader cloth, which just makes life so much easier. So I unroll it, and then I'm going to bring it underneath the dead bar and flop it back over onto the top. This means that I cannot load it incorrectly because if you have your leader cloth coming straight out to you at the front often you miss that dead bar and then you've got your fabric loaded in the wrong place which can be a bit of a pain okay so i'm going to flop that um, leader cloth over and i have the center of the cloth marked on this one and at the front so my fabric that i found the centers for i'm going to open it up a little bit there we go, and I'm just going to throw it over the frame, and the right side is down. So if this were my backing fabric with a pattern on it, the, the pretty side would be to the bottom. I'm going to match my fold for my center of the top to the line that I have marked on my leader cloth, and I'm going to pin them. So for me, the big advantage is I've got space for my pin cushion, so I'm not dropping that on the floor all the time. And my fabric is just hanging, it's not slipping, it's not dragging, I'm not having to grapple with it, it's just dead easy. So I'm going to pin this and then I'll show you the next stage. So my fabric's pinned on, I'm just going to pull the this over to the front and then roll it onto that back bar. Okay, so I'm at the front. I've got a little bit of extra length here and my fabric is just hanging nicely on the frame. And what I've done with the bar, the leader cloths here at the front, the bar that's closest to me, the belly bar, is actually the one that I want to pin my backing to. So if I move this out of the way, what I've done is take that leader cloth, let it hang down a bit longer, and then I flap it up over the bar that's at the top here. So this bar is actually designed for your quilt top, that you can pin the bottom edge of your quilt top to it. But I float my quilt, so I never use it. All right, so I'm going to fl flip this leader cloth for the belly bar, over and again it is also marked with its center point so I can pull this fabric over have it here and then I can match my centers so the center of the fabric 
with the center of my leader cloth and I can again pin it nice and quickly. You can even make a little trough here and put your pins in the trough. Then you don't even have to have the pincushion tucked under your arm. Okay, so my layers are now both attached, or my layer is attached at both ends, and I can roll on here and roll all my fabric back onto this bar. So initially it's loaded onto the top bar, but if I want to start the top of my quilt, then I need actually the backing to be on this one. So you can roll through using your hands and your wrists if you like to, or I'll show you an even better way. Hold one second and I'll readjust the camera. So you're looking in the opposite direction now. I actually have two of these hand wheels, which make it really awesome. When you get your machine and your frame, then there is a hand wheel on this top bar. But you can buy an additional one to go on the bottom bar there. And then you can literally just roll between the top and the bottom of your quilt. It makes life so much easier. It's not all that twisting with your hands and your wrist. So if you've got a little bit of unevenness, sometimes it's a bit saggy or a bit tight, then just roll backwards and forwards a few times and all that kind of gets evened out. If you've had your, if you straightened your uh, quilt backing properly in the beginning and if you found the centers and aligned the centers, then the fibers will sort themselves out and it will load up nice and flat. Okay, once those are locked in place, you can move your bar, this bar out of the way to put the batting in. So again, not all of the original gallery and studio frames had the pole cradles, but you can add them on if you want to. So it's so awesome, you just literally lift out your bar and put it on top, and then you have space. You've got space here to get underneath and put your batting in. So I've got mine hiding at the back here. Let's just slot it underneath. It makes it so, so much easier. Okay, then I can put this bar down again and take my channel locks and stitch myself a nice straight line through the backing and the batting and use that then to line up the top of my quilt to make sure I start off my quilt nice and square. If you're using a studio two frame or a gallery two frame with the clear view option, so where you can change the position of these two front poles to give you more space for ruler work um, and that you don't have to have your hand coming over the top of this bar, then I'll show you how I load the front section of that in the next video. Okay, so this is a Studio 2 frame. It has the different positions or the ability to have different positions with your front bars. So you have the clear view mode and you have your standard mode. My frame is set up in the clear view mode, which means it's easier for doing ruler work. You don't have a bar in the way of your hand because the fabric is level with this top bar. So I always um, load my quilts and I float them. I don't actually pin the quilt itself to a leader cloth. You're supposed to load your backing fabric to this bar and your quilt top to the bottom bar, the one that's underneath. I found that that doesn't really work for me because I custom quilt and I tend to move backwards and forwards through a quilt a lot. So I'll do first of all the structural part, then I'll go back to the top and I'll do all the main designs and then I might go back to the top and do all the borders. And as you roll backwards, then this bar here becomes fatter with your quilt because now you've got all the layers. But then it lifts it higher than the level of the needle. So you get a lot of bounce, which isn't nice for me. It makes me, um, gives me a headache. So um, I prefer to do it slightly differently. So what I've done is I've taken the leader cloth off of this top bar and I just leave it as it is. And I let load the back bar exactly the same way as I did with the initial frame. So I'm going to loop that leader cloth underneath the dead bar and over towards the back. And I'm going to pin my backing first onto that bar and roll it on. When I've done that, I'm going to just make sure I've got a bit of this leader cloth at the front hanging down. And I'm going to grab the backing fabric. This one I haven't loaded, it's just draped over, so you'll have to excuse me. And I'm going to let it hang on the frame that it hangs over the front. Again, I'm not grappling with it. I can work easily with it. 
I find the center of my fabric and the center of my leader cloth and I pin the two together. Once I've got those pinned in place, then again I just roll it backwards and forwards until everything is nice and smooth and any sort of looseness or tightness has been evened out. That's how I load my frame and I hope it will help you. Happy quilting!